Coronavirus. We're focused on answering your coronavirus questions. And we begin tonight with this question. It's a big one. Is Oregon the only state being sued over stay at home orders? The short answer here. No. On Monday, a Baker County judge called Governor Kate Brown's order unconstitutional after several churches sued. The decision could have struck down restrictions everywhere in the state. However, yesterday the governor's office appealed and the state Supreme Court put an emergency hold on the judge's decision. Both sides now have until Friday to respond. Now let's circle back to our question. Is Oregon the only state being sued over stay at home orders? Here's Kyle Aboshi. Oregon Governor Kate Brown is certainly not the only governor or state lawmaker being dragged into court over stay-at-home restrictions to try and stop the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. Governors in many states are now facing lawsuits as citizens and businesses itch to get back to normal. It's the governors that are facing these lawsuits, though, because the federal government and state lawmakers have taken a back seat. Instead, it is the governors that have issued these orders. In Oregon, the one case that has attracted the most attention is now before the state Supreme Court. It's asked that both parties file arguments by Friday in hopes of making a relatively quick decision on the emergency motion. All right, so the reopening of businesses this week has led to a lot of questions. For example, if you've been working from home, can your employer make you go back to the office? Dan Kalish has the answer. He's an employment lawyer with HKM Employment Attorneys. So Dan, thank you first of all for joining us. Can employers force their workers to return? Well, uh, Brittany, thanks for having me. Generally speaking, yes. Um, for the most part, employees have to go back to work if their employers ask them to. Now, there are a few exceptions. One of the exceptions would be that, for example, if an employee had a child at home as a result of a school closure, that person is legally entitled to take 12 weeks off to take care of their child. In addition, if an employee, for example, is ill or sick or treating someone who is ill, that person gets two weeks off. But other than that, generally speaking, um, you don't have to go back into work, but if you don't go back into work, the risk is that you will likely lose your unemployment benefits. All right, so our next question comes from our viewer, Beth. She says she's only working 20 hours of her usual 40-hour work week. She's working from home, and she's also on workers' comp. So her question is, can she still collect unemployment? Possibly. As a preliminary matter, if you are working half of the time that you would normally work, yes, you're entitled to unemployment benefits. If, on the other hand, you are getting workers' comp benefits, it depends on what workers' compensation benefits you're getting. For example, if you're just getting medical coverage, then generally you should be able to get unemployment benefits. If, however, you're also getting what's called time loss benefits or the benefits of pay that you otherwise can't get now because you are injured, then you wouldn't be entitled to unemployment benefits under that circumstance. And we have another question from a viewer, Kathy. She says she's self-employed and filed for unemployment. She says she was told her first unemployment check would come in the mail, but she hasn't gotten it and she can't get through to the state unemployment officials. So do you have any advice or suggestions? Because a lot of people out there are in a very similar boat. I don't have any good advice. You know, I can't tell you how many people have called us with this exact same question. People either not being able to file for unemployment benefits or file for unemployment benefits and then don't hear anything or ask a question and not get any follow up. I think what people have to under understand is just the pr practical fact of the matter is, is that these people are overworked, they're super busy, and it's almost impossible to get in hold of them. I don't know of any other alternative way to get in touch with them. Just keep on being persistent, try to be patient, and keep on trying. You know, we have heard success stories. We have heard that people sometimes have been able to get in touch with the unemployment officials. But I would just encourage any of those people to keep on trying and be patient because it's a mess trying to get in touch with those individuals. And I just have one final question. As we start to reopen and people start to go back to work, if there are employees out there that are frustrated, concerned about going back to work, what's the best resource for them to answer questions? Would it be contacting attorneys like yourself? Yeah, you, you know, we actually have a coronavirus website set up for people in Oregon. It's, it's hkm.com slash 
Portland backslash coronavirus. And I think if you go to our website would be one example. We have a, also a national coronavirus page that provides a Q&A of literally all the questions that were simply asked here. We also provide a round table every week or every other week to provide to answer some specific questions too. So absolutely, that'd be one thing I would encourage to start there. We provide a good resource and we're trying to provide employees with the best information that we have. Now more than ever, that is so essential. Dan Kalish, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And at any time, you can send in your question. There's a new number to text. It's right there on your screen, 503 226-5088. Now, if we don't get to yours tonight, we will be answering questions right here at 7 o'clock, Monday through Wednesday. Well, still to come, which counties in our area have started the reopening process? But first, we have a question. Does ibuprofen worsen COVID-19 symptoms? The World Health Organization says there's no link between ibuprofen and severe coronavirus symptoms. Never clean gutters again. Call Gutter Helmet for your free quote today. Ford has really stepped up to get the economy rolling again, making now an exceptional opportunity to buy a vehicle at Landmark Ford Lincoln. We have one of the largest selections of new Fords in the entire Northwest and most qualify for a six-month payment relief. Ford will defer three payments and make three of your payments. Our showroom is open or you can visit LandmarkFord.com. We're also providing pickup and delivery for service customers. Call, email, or see us today at Landmark Ford Lincoln and Tigard. Meteorites are fun! Children are like meteorites. Hurtling through space, they crash into things everywhere they go. So what do we do with our delicate items? Join these not so delicate ears. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Well, those are my little meteorites. Public storage is clean, close, and ready now with limited contact precautions. First month's rent is just $1. Save up to 30% after that. To find a unit near you, text MOP to 250-250. This has been a tough time. It's been challenging for so many. And at Beaverton Toyota, we knew we had a responsibility to our customers and to our employees to adjust and to improve. We took our philosophy that we call CLEAR and made it better and safer. With CLEAR, you always worked with just one person, but now we put you in even more control. And we work to make remote shopping and buying easier than ever. Now is the time to experience CLEAR at Beaverton Toyota. Video calls, meal planning, raising little humans. I don't have time to research tires. DiscountTire.com with Treadwell makes it easy. It's my personal tire guide. I get trustworthy recommendations for tires based on my needs and driving habits. I click buy, I click book an appointment, I drive up, and now with their trustless experience, I can even stay in my car during the service. All right, Ms. Gomez, you're all set. Boom. The robot surgeon accused of strangling his wife. He's a cutting-edge doctor who performs operations with robots. Cops say he turned on his wife. He says he didn't do it. Next Inside Edition. Tonight at 7.30 on KGW. Oregon's primary election, May 19th. On election night, text the word RESULTS to 503-226-5088 and KGW will send up-to-the-minute results straight to your phone. Welcome back to KGW Q&A. Here's a question for you. Can people who test positive for COVID-19 a second time after recovering still infect others? NBC News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John Torres explains the results of a new study. We may no longer be infectious after having the virus. Scientists from the Korean Centers of Disease Control and Prevention studied 285 COVID-19 survivors who had already fought the illness off, but then later tested positive for the virus. Now, while this showed the virus was still in their body, researchers also found that these patients weren't contagious. They no longer had infectious virus and most likely tested positive again due to the virus being left over after their infection. Now, one theory is that even though the virus was still in their system, it was no longer active, meaning they were shedding what we call a dead virus. Now, this is important because it suggests if you had COVID-19 and recovered, you don't present a risk of spreading coronavirus, especially as we continue to reopen and relax social distancing measures. Well, we've seen reopenings across Oregon. 31 of our 36 counties are in phase one. So 
when will others reopen? Multnomah, Clackamas and Washington counties are aiming for phase one in early to mid-June. Today, commissioners from Multnomah and Clackamas met virtually. Clackamas County voted to move forward with their application, but their biggest barrier remains contact tracing. Both counties are hiring more staff to meet state requirements, and they're trying to ease worries about the process. I just want to let folks know, first of all, it's secure, it's confidential, it has more uh, specific legal protections around it uh, than even your own medical health records do. And I do also want to mention, because this has been a concern for folks, um, that is voluntary when people share that information with us. So what about Washington's reopening status? Well, Clark and Cowlitz counties are now eligible to apply for phase two. Only two counties in our area have already appro been approved for phase two. That's Gamania and Wakayakum. In phase two, barbershops and salons can reopen, along with restaurants at 50% capacity and tables of five or less. Limited non-essential travel close to home is allowed. So is camping and small gatherings of five people or less. Governor Inslee says there are hopeful signs, but he also has a warning. We've made progress, but we're just so far from being out of the woods. I know some people sort of say, well, we should start worrying about the second wave of the virus. And when I hear that, I think, well, when did the first wave pass? Because it is not. We still are having uh, somewhere 150, 200 people a day infected. Uh, this is not passed. We have flattened the curve, but it continues to haunt us and infect our communities. With countries like France and Germany easing their restrictions, what can the U.S. learn from them? NBC News medical contributor Dr. Kavita Patel answers that for us. Even in those cases of other countries where they've reopened, for example, like in Germany and had an increase in cases, we're still learning something from that. And here's what we can learn from places that have reopened, including in the United States. We need to try to reopen in a safe and healthy way, which means we should be avoiding what I would call high risk settings. We should be avoiding reopening close to nursing homes or places where there are a large number of elderly or potentially sick people. Any place that reopens should be well ventilated. This means good airflow having the proper hygiene so that you can wash your hands frequently if you do visit a business. And if you are one of those businesses, making sure that people can stay at least six feet apart and making sure that you encourage wear as much as possible non-medical masks, including for children. Could wearing a face mask put you at risk of carbon dioxide poisoning? Our Verify team takes on that viral claim when we come back. But first, a question. Can hydroxychloroquine, which is used to treat malaria and lupus, also be used to treat coronavirus? The answer? The Food and Drug Administration has warned against the use of hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID-19. The FDA says the drug should only be used in hospitals or clinical trials. Never clean gutters again. Call Gutter Helmet for your free quote today. Across America, business owners are figuring things out, finding new ways to serve customers, connect employees, and work with partners. Comcast Business is right there with you, with a network that helps give you speed, reliability, and security, and enough bandwidth to handle all your connected devices. Voice solutions like remote call forwarding and readable voicemail, and safe, convenient installation. When every connection counts, you can count on us. Get the connectivity your business needs. Call today. Comcast Business. Okay, role play. Jamie, Mara's the customer. Excuse me, would you be interested in bundling your home and auto with Progressive? No. Well, you could save money. I'm independently wealthy. You can get round-the-clock protection. I have a bodyguard. Okay, this is totally unrealistic. Well, you weren't really selling I didn't buy it at all. Yeah, it was really bad. Okay, okay, I can do better. I can do better. My name is Jamie and I'm here to say Jamie, oh, okay, no, don't do that. Nope. In this moment, going to school looks a lot different. And because of this pandemic, it's even harder for struggling families to get the basic school supplies their kids need to learn and thrive. And the need is critical. That's why On Point Community Credit Union is proud to support Schoolhouse Supplies, who's assembling thousands of at-home learning kits to help kids adapt to this new reality. But so many more are needed. So please go to schoolhousesupplies.org to donate today. Great news. 
Now there's a treatment for erectile dysfunction that does not require surgery, injections, or even medication. Multnomah Medical Clinic uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, restoring normal function in the bedroom with no side effects or downtime. Call now and get a free medical assessment and blood flow ultrasound worth $300. So put a stop to your ED now. Call Multnomah Medical Clinic for your free assessment today or visit us at multnomahmedical.com. KGW reaches thousands of people every day. Whether it's on television or through KGW's extensive digital platforms, we can help your business connect with new customers. In unpredictable times, the KGW marketing team has proven strategies that will help your bottom line. Consumers are watching TV and streaming their favorite programs more than ever. We partner with many different industries and budgets, but always with the same goal, bringing you results. Contact us today at advertising at KGW.com. A new study is giving insight into how coronavirus could spread and our urge to communicate might be the big culprit. Let's connect the dots. The new research was done by the University of Pennsylvania and the National Institutes of Health. It found that ordinary human speech can emit small droplets that hang in the air for at least eight minutes, maybe even longer. The researchers used lasers to study the small respiratory droplets that come out when we speak. While this study was not looking specifically at coronavirus, the CDC has already said it can be spread by respiratory droplets when a person sneezes, coughs, or talks. And how we talk seems to make a difference. The researchers in the study found when someone talks loudly for one minute in a confined space, they can produce at least a thousand droplets. Reports suggest after some of the preliminary findings of this research were released last month, the CDC changed course and started recommending everyone wear face masks in public. Experts who have looked at the research say even though this study wasn't looking at COVID-19, it provides evidence that a normal conversation in close proximity could put you at risk. I'm definitely a loud talker, so maybe I'll take the volume down a little. Well, what can you expect if you get an antibody test? This is a big one. This type of test can determine if you've had coronavirus in the recent past. And Dr. Natasha Bouyan with One Medical explains what the process might look like. The clinician can kind of consult them on the pros and cons of getting the test. If a patient wants to move forward and get the test, we put the order in and they can come to any one of our offices to get that blood draw done. And the test results are turning around in about two to four days and we're able to report out the results to our patients on our app. Have you seen posts online claiming that face masks could put you at risk of carbon dioxide poisoning? Well, Jason Puckett with our Verify team reached out to medical experts to get the facts. Let's start with the claims. A few of you sent us this image titled Masks and Carbon Dioxide Toxicity. It says masks could trap exhaled carbon dioxide and cause us to breathe it back in, which it claims leads to CO2 intoxication or poisoning. Symptoms include breathing problems, muscle twitches, loss of judgment, and more. The image is being used as justification for not wearing masks right now. But is it true? Simple answer, carbon dioxide can be dangerous at high levels, but experts don't believe face masks put you at risk. Our sources here are the CDC and the USDA. So the USDA details how different levels of carbon dioxide affect us. Increase the concentration and you can experience drowsiness, increased heart rate, all the way to possible confusion and unconsciousness. So at high levels, carbon dioxide can cause physical effects. The key question is whether it's actually building to those dangerous levels in masks. The CDC says it's unlikely in medical masks and even less likely in homemade masks. They said carbon dioxide can build up over time in masks, but not to dangerous levels. At worst, you may get a headache, but certainly not carbon dioxide poisoning. And that's based on research about medical quality equipment like N95 masks. They have tighter seals and allow less air in and out. Homemade masks, especially cloth ones, aren't great at stopping air from going in or out, period. And that's not their purpose. The CDC says their use is to catch droplets that could spread the virus. So bottom line, while high concentrations of carbon dioxide can affect your health, we can verify the claims that masks are causing carbon dioxide poisoning or toxicity are false. Keep in mind, you shouldn't be wearing these for long periods anyway. The CDC only recommends masks when you're out in public and when you can't social distance. If you have other questions for us to look into, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. 
Coming up, can taking supplements protect you against COVID-19? But first, let's get to another viewer question. They want to know, can flies transmit coronavirus? The answer, the World Health Organization says there's no evidence to suggest that flies can spread COVID-19. Meet Cameron Green, Inside Woodlawn. Watch now on YouTube. It's mom, it's mom. This stay-at-home dad deserves a break. Hey, babe. Don't do... This light sleeper deserves a night's rest. This delivery guy deserves a day off. And good drivers deserve to save money on car insurance. The Wawanisa Way. Great rates for good drivers. Call for a free quote or visit wawanisa.com. At Papa Murphy's, we need seriously, chop seriously, and shred seriously. Because we're serious about Tuesdays, even if you're not. Every Tuesday, get a large pizza for just $12. Papa Murphy's, change the way you pizza. At the Tonkin family of dealerships, we're focused on new ways of doing business while keeping everyone safe. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, now is a great time. Many auto manufacturers are offering incentives to keep our economy moving, like 0% financing, no payments for as much as four months. It truly is a good time to consider buying a car. Browse the largest selection of new and pre-owned vehicles in Portland. So visit any of our area dealerships or Tonkin.com. Car buying made easy. In the Pacific Northwest, we know what it's like to experience a breath of fresh air. Stepping in the front door, we want you to have that same feeling. At Pyramid Heating and Cooling, our mission is to create healthy, comfortable, efficient indoor environments. As a carrier factory authorized dealer, we work to provide customers the best savings and financing available. Call today to save up to $3,800 on qualified systems by carrier. Turn to the experts at Pyramid Heating and Cooling and thrive in the great indoors. Here at Wilsonville Toyota, if you call in, if you email in, if you show up, there is no different pricing structure. It is the same price in all three instances. Instead of driving from place to place to place and trying to get their best price and spending 10 hours on a Saturday of your free time, you can come here. We have our best prices right on the window of all of our pre-owned vehicles and our new vehicles as well. So it makes it really easy to come down and get the best prices on both and to see which one works best for you. And that is no bull. On Point Community Credit Union is giving $25,000 to Schoolhouse Supplies to help struggling families get the essential learning tools their kids need. Join us today by donating at schoolhousesupplies.org. The robot surgeon accused of strangling his wife. He's a cutting-edge doctor who performs operations with robots. Cops say he turned on his wife. He says he didn't do it. Next in Sun Edition. Tonight at 730 on KGW. Election season is here. Download the KGW app and stay informed. Get push alerts with race results plus news stories to keep you in the know. Download the KGW app at the App Store or Google Play. Can taking supplements like vitamin C boost your immune system and protect you against the coronavirus? Marty Saul looked into it. Vitamin C is good for your immune system. So will doubling up on the supplement protect you against the coronavirus? False. Our bodies can only absorb a few hundred milligrams of vitamin C at a time. High doses can cause a number of side effects, including nausea, cramps, and an increased risk of kidney stones. What about superfoods like chia seeds and coconut oil? No, they won't work either. Experts recommend eating a healthy, balanced diet with a variety of fruits and veggies that provide immune-boosting vitamins. People who have malnutrition, either by not getting enough protein or not getting enough of the nutrients and vitamins to help to boost your immune system, have problems fighting off illness. So what does help? De-stressing. When you're stressed, the body produces the hormone cortisol that may interfere with the immune system. Also, a study by the University of California, San Francisco, found getting at least seven hours of sleep per night makes you four times less likely to get sick. Your body can't fight off disease if you're broken down because you're overrunning yourself. But the most important thing experts say is to practice social distancing. And that's what's gonna protect you more than just taking a supplement. I'm Marty Salt reporting. Well, those stay-at-home orders have many of us stuck on the couch, so 
how can you fight the temptation to overeat? I need to listen to this one. Nutritionists say sticking to a schedule for meals and snacks can help, along with looking for healthy options. But it's also important to think about why you're eating. We actually could be tired, or we could be bored, or we could be, um, we could be thirsty even. And so here's a tip to keep from overeating. Brush your teeth right after a meal or have some peppermint tea. The flavor actually tends to decrease your appetite. Well, hey, Oregon's primary election is today. So in the midst of this pandemic, what does voter turnout look like? We recently spoke with PSU political science professor Dr. Jack Miller about the impact of COVID-19 on politics. But everybody that I talked to, even the ones who are using social media strategies and were planning to use them even before the coronavirus came, uh, acknowledges that there is no substitute for face-to-face -face contact in local politics. So everybody's just wondering, okay, will this be a paradigm shift or is this just kind of a one-year uh, anomaly? be interesting to see those results tonight. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Tomorrow, we're going to be answering your medical coronavirus questions with Dr. Claire Wheeler. Don't want to miss that. And if you still have questions, our past stories might answer them for you. You can go straight to kgw.com answers to see all of our past Q&As.